Well, Sizwe Mpofu Walsh uh, was first introduced to South African hip-hop industry as part of the Teenage Trio Entity. Now, after a long break away from the music industry, the academic and the activist released his debut album titled Democracy and Delusion, which is accompanied by a book. Now, the album goes into the current affairs that uh, we presently faced with in the country and the upbringing of the artist. And he joins me now in studio to share more on his uh, music career. Sizwe, great chatting to you. And uh, very warm welcome. Thanks so much. It's good to see you. All right, indeed. Now, just how was it important uh, in your first offering to get the message across? I think it was important. Hip-hop has become a phenomenon, but I think there are a lot of people who wish that some of our artists would speak a little bit more about what's happening in the country. And so I wanted to try and combine music that sounded good and that could sound as good as anything you hear on the radio with a social message to get young people thinking, to start a debate, mm -hmm. and to really try and see if we as young people can start offering solutions to the country's problems. And one of the tracks of your album titled Sizwe is about your parents. Why was it essential for you to write about them? What sort of influence did they have on your music? That's right. You know, a lot of people see me through the prism of my parents, especially my father. Um, and I wanted to tell their story because a lot of people see both of my parents who are political activists sure. on the TV, but they actually don't know their stories, where they came from. And so before I got political and I started telling people what I think is wrong with the country, I first wanted to tell people where I come from, who I am and trace that journey mm. a little bit more deeply. Yeah, and you took time off the music industry and you've since made a comeback. What's your analysis of the hip-hop industry in the country? Look, I think it's great. I think young black entrepreneurs have built something on their own yeah. and really turned it into something that's really vibrant, free expression is a major point in our society right now. But I also do think that it would be cool if we had a lot more social commentary in our hip-hop. Yeah. And that's always been the root of hip-hop music. And I just want to try and bring that back for this era because I think there's so much to talk about, so much that young people care about. And they want to hear artists speaking about the issues that affect them. Yeah. And uh, your music, your album is also accompanied by a book. Uh, and some right. people say it's very political. I mean, uh, when, when writing the song, how did you try to, uh, to balance the information just so it doesn't appear as biased? Yeah, you know, the book is very researched. There are all kinds of notes. It's written in quite a scholarly way, whereas the music is more about the emotions of what it feels like to live in South Africa today. And it is political, you know, and I don't think we should run away from that. Yeah. Uh, political, I think, just means caring about what happens around you and being brave enough to speak about it. And it's not that everyone has to agree. You know, I also started this project to start a debate, to have people tell me, you know what, I actually think you're wrong on this subject. Sure. But as long as we get that conversation going and we're not scared to talk about the things that we see in our country, both good and bad, I think that can only be a good thing for our democracy. Let's just hope you don't be recalled. Let's just hope the lights don't go off. <laughs> <laughs> now, the project uh, Cesar, includes some notable wordsmiths like books, uh, Lebo Mashile and Solo. What was it about them that, made, that influenced you or that made you to include them in the album? Yeah, that's right. Lebo Mashile has a brilliant original poem about land on the album. Solo is a great rapper and I wanted to really elevate the voices of artists who are both brilliant artists but who also have a social consciousness who are intervening in the public debate at the moment. And that's why I really included those artists. There are a number of others like Dope St. Jude, who I also yeah. include. And so I think it's important to start building a platform of artists who both contribute musically, but okay. also socially to what's going on around us. What are you busy with currently? Well, promoting this book. I'm still waiting for my cease and desist. It hasn't come. <laughs> but, um, and of course, I'm also doing my, my PhD. Okay. Um, and I'm really just trying to keep educating myself on the country, its problems, and how we can solve them. Sure. And uh, where can people catch you perform? They can catch me performing, in fact, tonight at uh, what was Baseline in, in Newtown. Come okay. through to that this evening. The album is in all music stores. It can be streamed online, and the book is in all shops. Okay. What time is it? It's at uh, 9.30. Okay. 9.30 this evening. All right. So come through to Baseline. Most definitely, yeah. most definitely. Well, great chatting to you, Cesar. Thank you, you so too. much for your time. You too. Thank you. All right. Well, that, uh, that's uh, Cesar Mpofuel. She's now joining artists such as uh, Dumi Mulikane and MLYX who have in the past released books to accompany their musical projects. And we'll be back with, him, with, back with more from him. Stay tuned to Morning.